Hi, I'm Joe Lample and the Joe behind Joe Gardner. Pruning, it's one of those great mysteries of life. It's hard to imagine cutting something back in order to stimulate its growth, but that's what happens when you prune. There's a hormone in that plant called auxin, and that hormone is suppressed as long as the terminal bud is there, such as in this right here. Now, nothing's gonna happen until I cut this back. Now, just by cutting that back, there's a hormone in there, the auxin that I mentioned, that's now no longer suppressed. That auxin is gonna be released, new shoots are gonna come out the side, and that's what you see when you cut something back and all that rapid growth takes place. So there are a number of examples in this garden, and we're gonna show you some up close and personal ways to do some pruning in your own garden. Now this shrub's getting a little tall for the area and it's starting to fill out a little too much also. So we're gonna cut back these branches that are encroaching into the walkway. Let's start right there. As I look at these outward growing branches, I wanna make my cut further into the plant. So I'm gonna trace this branch back in and find a point where there's a smaller branch growing out of it. And that's where I'll make my cut. But sometimes I don't know exactly where I wanna make that cut because I have a couple choices. Well, the problem is if I go in too deep and make my cut the first time, I can't reverse that cut. It's done. So a tip that you can use at home is to make the cut further out first if you're trying to decide which one to make. If you don't like that one and you want to go further in, well, then you can still do it. Now, this is my first of two choices, and it's the one that's closest to the walkway. I'll make the cut. I'll look back, and I'll think, okay, that looks pretty good. But you know what, I could afford to go in just a little bit more and not hurt any of the aesthetics. So I think I'll do that. I'm gonna trace it back to another branch that's growing out a little bit further in. And again, I'll make an angled cut about a quarter to a half an inch above that outward growing branch. Now I've made that cut and I look back and I think, yeah, that's a lot better. And so we're good. Now I'll repeat that process all throughout the shrub where it's coming out onto other plants or coming out into the walkway. This hydrangea is the victim of an early spring frost, and this is a good example of when we would cut back dead and diseased wood. Now, this plant is going to be fine. I really want to cut it back to rejuvenate it and make it look a lot better. I'm going to take this dead wood, I'm going to trace the stem down all the way to where I see good, healthy, active growth. Now, in this case, that doesn't happen until we get very close to the bottom, but that's no problem because in no time, this will spring back just fine with new growth. I'm going to cut that right about there. And now I've got some good active growth, and this is going to come up. And it's really that simple. I'll take each stem, I'll trace it back down to where I see active growth. And I usually like to look for two sets of buds, one on each side of the stem, because that's going to give me good branching as this plant grows back out. But I'll look around here, and I'll continue to do this all the way around, and then I'll have a great-looking plant that in a matter of weeks, you'll never even know I had to cut it. Well, this has been a lot of fun, and I hope you've enjoyed these few simple examples of pruning. Before I go, one final thought. Pruning is really quite simple, and it doesn't have to be complicated. Here's a last example. This is an oak leaf hydrangea. Now, about eight months ago, this plant was rather thin looking, and I wanted to promote some new growth. So I made a cut. Now, this was the only branch growing at the time. So I made the cut right here, hoping to get growth out of both sides because I had a leaf set right here. Well, I was successful on one side. As you see, this new growth coming all the way down, and look, I actually have a beautiful flower bud. Now, the other side turned out not to be viable, but no worries because just an inch or so down, that set of leaves really branched out nicely, and I've got growth coming up both sides, and it's doing really well. But then on top of that, in order to promote additional growth, I made a cut here just above another set of leaves, those didn't produce, but again, just the next set down, I've got growth forming. In fact, on that one side, that growth is coming up, and that is a flower bud. On the other side, I came up, I made the cut, and just as I anticipated, both sets of leaves produced new branching. Follow that branch up, and look here. I have a flower bud here and a flower bud on the other side. So I'm really excited. I have a plant that's shaped up nicely, it's very full, and it's ready to go in the garden. And I hope that the examples today have inspired you to go out and prune in your own garden. And I'll see you back here next time.